Welcome back to the channel and today we are finally getting started on my EK Civic. I'm so excited to be working on Hondas again and um, yeah, I haven't really done much in this garage for about a month. Uh, so we are getting straight back into it with this build because there is so much to do today. Um, and I really want to do this in half a day. I'm not sure if I'm being too ambitious, uh, but I'll show you guys what we're going to be doing today. So um, yeah, in stock form, it is not ready for the track and we are due down at Ludham Raceway in two weeks time uh, to do a shakedown on this car. And then hopefully, um, if the stars align, we can go down to Winton in September uh, to compete in Honda Nationals. So yeah, in its current form, uh, it is a completely stock 96 CXI. Um, so they come with uh, the 240 front calipers um, and then uh, also the re-drums. Um, it's a really basic runaround car. Um, but I've got a lot of parts to go onto it uh, to transform this into a track ready machine. Um, and yeah, I'm just gonna get onto showing you everything. So all this kind of snowballed from when I was planning on doing just the redis conversion a couple months ago, but I bought a set without handbrake cables, big mistake. Um, and yeah, this is the second set. It's been rebushed with Norlothane bushes um, and it's got good rotors and good pads. So this should be pretty much bowled up. And I thought, you know what, while we're doing the rear discs, we might as well sort out the fronts. Um, so I went ahead and got um, these knuckles from uh, an EK4 and Kitty from Jenny Yard kindly pushed these uh, new lower ball joints in. Um, for the fronts, uh, I'm not keeping the 262. And Chris from CGR Panel and Paint, he kindly stripped these back um, and painted them in black. Um, these are DC2R calipers, which he has donated to this build. Um, so that's gonna be really cool. He knows the theme of this car is gonna be black on black on black. You know, he's painting this car black. So um, <laughs> just waiting for him. Um, he also donated the one inch master and booster from a DC2R. These are just a straight bolt on um, to the EK Civic. I'm gonna be running uh, these brake rotors. And by rotors, I mean brake discs. These are the Mini Cooper 280 millimeter discs. Um, same hub uh, center bore and also same PCD as the EK Civic. It's all gonna be paired with these E-League racing pads. I think these are the KT Triple Ones. I've heard a lot of good things about these pads and I'm keen to find out. Once again, I'm using the RBF 600 like I did in the FD. And uh, yeah, some new hoses and yeah. Callovers. JDM Yard Australia have been supporting me for the past, you know, 12, 13 years. Since I was an L plater when I bought my first front EK Civic clip. Um, and they hooked me up with these callovers, no questions asked, you know. Uh, I really appreciate those guys. All these parts, most of my Honda parts, I get through them. Um, they're the best one-stop shop in the whole of Australia. Um, and yeah, new wheels and tires. I'm gonna show you guys. So these are the Koenig Decograms. I got these brand new for a steel. Um, and yeah, I just couldn't pass on them. Really was a toss up between the Decogram and the RPF one in the 15 by eight, 28. These are 15 by seven and a half by 30. Um, and yeah, you know what? It was a bit of a gamble because I didn't know if they'd fit the brake caliper, but they do. I've just test fitted it and it just fits. So very lucky because I love the look of this wheel. It's kind of like a flat face, but still got Still got a bit of concave on it. Um, I've paired it up with the 808Rs uh, in the 205 15. They're a really good tire and they're currently on special uh, four for three. Um, so yeah, got those for a steel as well. And the good thing about the 808Rs is um, they are hard wearing, they're really good on the street and they last forever. So yeah, I've got a lot to do. Um, I really don't know if I wanna finish this today. Uh, so hopefully I do. Um, I'm very familiar with this platform, but at the same time, this is a stock car with 240,000 Ks. Who knows how hard it's gonna be to, to pull stuff off. Um, so yeah, let's just get into it. I don't really have a plan of attack with this. Um, I'm just gonna take everything off um, and then we'll start bolting things up.
Okay, at this point, um, wheels off, and this is what we're working with. Pretty much all of this has to come off apart from the camber arm, uh, the low control arm, and the tie rod. So uh, my plan of attack is probably to remove the suspension first. Um, but before all that, I'm going to drain uh, the fluid from the reservoir, and then I'm going to crack the line just so all the, all the brake fluid drains out. Otherwise, it can get pretty messy. Uh, yeah, that's what we're working with, and that's the rear. These are the drum rears. Um, for the rears, the camera arm will stay on um, and the tow arm. Um, I'm probably going to pull that out for ease of installation. Um, but yeah, much the same. Suspension out first and then the arms can come out. Easy. Okay, and drain the rest of the caliper like that. So next I'm gonna remove this upper ball joint to the camber arm. Um, I like to jack this up, just so it kind of takes the load off the ball joint. And then just where it's neutral, then you're gonna remove the split pin. There we go. And that one is a 17. And 17. A little hammer if you need, or just with your hand like that. So I'm gonna leave this nut on because we still have to separate the ball joint from this knuckle. And to do this, I'm just gonna get a big hammer. Just give it a good whack. There we go. That took more effort then than I thought it would. Yep, so just separate it like that and the knuckle is free. So same deal with the tie rod ball joint. Get us to remove the split pin. Again, it's a 17. All right, and again, we need to separate this ball joint. So big hammer, just on this spot. Done. This one's a lot easier. And next we're gonna remove the CV nut. It's a 32 millimeter nut. Close your ears. Easy for the Milwaukee. And then the shaft should come out. And it's out. So I'm just gonna dangle it on the side. And the last part of this front knuckle is to remove the lower ball joint from this lower controller. Once again, you got a split pin. This is probably gonna be the hardest part of the day. Just got to do it twice. All right, so again, it's 17. All right, hardest part of the day, just whack it there. Now, I don't really care about the ball joint. Uh, I'm not reusing this knuckle, so um, yeah, but if you are reusing the stuff or you're going to sell it, just make sure, um, yeah, try to conserve the ball joint if you can. This is a stubborn one actually. That's it. Ooh. 
Woo. That's it. That's as bad as it gets. Just a quick tip with that one. Um, what you want to do is obviously have upward force on the knuckle and have downward force on this low control arm. So I use the jack to jack up the knuckle from the brake disc. I'm holding it here at the top where the knuckle is. I'm stopping the jack on my feet. And then I'm using my right hand to hammer on these spots and also just a gentle, gentle one there. You don't really want to bash this too hard. Bash it here where the ball joint sits inside the low control arm. Done. All right, so moving on to the rears. And to do that, I need to undo the handbrake cables which are under this area. I need to take this panel off and also this console needs to come off. Uh, just a bunch of screws. Let's set that down. And on the other side, I love this key knob. I've kept it with me for a long time. And this console should come off. It's hard to do it with one hand. There we go. That's it. Got some money there. And that's what we're after. All right. Got it. And this inside. Oh, and that's loose. All right, so for this part, again, I'm gonna undo the suspension first, get that out first, and then I'm gonna get under the car and undo the handbrake bracket bolts, um, and then this uh, retrailing arm should come straight out. This is very straightforward. I'm definitely a bit rusty. That took me longer than I thought. Um, anyways, that's the passenger side done. Uh, and yeah, gonna move on to the driver's side after I get some lunch. And yeah, see you guys then. All right, so that's all four corners off the car, ready for our new parts. Um, off camera, I also went and swapped out the master and the booster. This actually took quite a while because you know, it's actually really hard to get the booster up um, and replace it with a bigger booster. There's not much room. So I actually removed the leg off the booster um, and it did go in a lot easier. Um, I'm pretty happy I caught onto that because when I pulled off this old booster, I realized there's a bit of fluid leaking from the master there. So um, yeah, I'm very lucky. I think I caught it at the right time. But anyways, I'm gonna pack up and call it a day. How naive was I to think that I could sort all this out in one day? It was never gonna happen. Um, but I'm just too excited to get these wheels on. Um, yeah, anyways, um, I might see you guys in the next few days. And just like that, another week has gone by and we're one week out from the track day. Yes, I am sick again for like the fourth time this flu season. I'm so over it. So please excuse the audio. Um, it's actually in my throat, I've lost my voice. So today I do have a couple of hours with the Civic and I do have some time to run you guys through what's required to convert your EK CXI to the 240 millimeter brakes to the 280 millimeter upgrade. Um, so by the end of this video, hopefully you guys will have a good idea of what you will need and I will be able to have this car ready for registration and a wheel alignment. Um, so yeah, I am just a week out from this track day. 
uh, I am sick and the car is really not ready. So hopefully we can sort it all out today. All right, to start this off today, we are gonna be installing this um, EK4 knuckle. The knuckle from the CX side will not work. You will need any knuckle to suit a 260 millimeter rotor. So your EK1 GLI will suit, um, and also the DC2 ones, and I believe some of the EG knuckles will suit. All right, so I've got all the ball joints in, so the camber arm, the tie rod, and also the lower ball joint. I'm just gonna tighten them up. I'm not gonna fully tighten them yet. Once the whole suspension's in, I'm gonna go around and preload the suspension and tighten it to spec. Okay, so these are the rotors we're gonna be using. Um, DBA2526, they're from a Mini Cooper, but I can't tell you the exact model. Um, now, if you don't want to use this retrofit option, um, you can actually go for the DC2R rotor, uh, which will fit up perfectly to that hub. Um, now, Jamie and actually have them in stock and they already come pre-drilled uh, 4x100. So, if you're looking for uh, more of a factory option and not something which is retrofit, um, they have those in stock, ready to go. So, this is this I'm using. Um, I like using blanks. It's just a, a habit of mine. Um, I don't know, I know certain somebody, Chris, does not like me using blanks. All right, so my rotors are going on. Now you might ask me, why do you choose blanks? Well, I choose blanks because I use them for about a track day or two, and then I put them straight in the bin. To me, I haven't found the benefit of going for like a, a drilled and dimpled rotor. Um, I do like my blanks, and I haven't had any issues with them. I haven't cracked them before, even with the very aggressive Hawk pads. Um, I've never split a rotor, so. I use the blanks and I replace them quite regularly. Now, as you can tell, the locating screw does not line up, so you can't actually bolt this rotor down to the knuckle. And that's why some people decide to go for the DC2R option. I don't really mind because as long as it is hub-centric and the wheel is on square, you won't have any issues and I am happy with that. All right, so I just thought this would be a great opportunity to show you guys the different calipers that Honda offers. Um, and straight off the bat, you can see how much bigger this DC to our caliper is. So I believe this caliper is shared with um, the CRV. Uh, so the CRV, DC to our NSX and EK9, they'll use the same caliper. I'm just gonna put them like this so you can see the sizes of the pistons. Uh, so yeah, the small piston, the medium size, and the large size. And that is the different pads. Um, that you can get from e-league so as you can tell this is a much bigger upgrade um, and it's a good thing that we sorted out the uh, the one inch booster and the master because those calipers are going to need it uh, yeah so anyways i'm going to get this fitted into the car i'm going to pre-install these e-league pads into the caliper and we're just going to slot them straight into the knuckle all right so we're going from the cxi to the dc to our caliper what a huge difference one-handed Yep, yep, yep. Boom. Oh, this side. Ready. Oh, snap. Oh, beautiful. Very nice. Apparently it was a black brake pad. All right, into the car. Good ridge bread brake lines. Juicy. All right, so the good ridge lines don't actually come with uh, the banjo bolt. I'm not sure what happened there. Eh? Used to come with them. But anyways, I've just taken my stock one off um, and this should bolt right up. Alrighty, done. So nice. I love that black caliper. It's gonna look so nice with those black wheels. Oh, yeah. All right, let's get onto the back. So I know you've seen this. So this is gonna be a straight bolt on onto the Civic. Um, all I need is the factory toe arm uh, from my CXI retrailing arms. 
And just so you guys know, you don't actually need to get them from the EK. You can actually use the ones from the DC2, um, the 4x100 ones. So any of the DC2 ones should work with this. As long as you have the handbrake cables, um, it should be a complete bolt on. So front and rear done, and I'm just gonna quickly go and sort out the other side. Oh, no way. Yeah, righto. All right, time for the suspension, I guess. I'm gonna unbox these hard race H-spec callovers, and we're gonna get them into the car. You guys are lucky, I don't usually do unboxings. Because I don't unbox, I just open. Oh, very nice. So this is actually my third set of high race coilovers. I think the first set I bought new, um, they were the Gen 1s and the second set I had, uh, they were used and they were on the case swap and this is my third set. So apparently they've changed the spring rates to 10.8 um, and I know that they used to be 12.8 so um, yeah, I'm just not too sure how it's going to go with this setup. Um, I have no, I have no sway bars in that Civic so Wow. Nice. Different colors. It looks like a chunkier body as well. Um, and I think the old one used to be red and blue. So these are nice and stealthy. I like them. You get these C-spanners and damper adjustment dials. They're pretty cool. Awesome, alrighty. Yeah, I really like the, the theme. And these ones are the rears. These callovers are for the fork type uh, EG or EK. So if you guys don't know, the lower control arms on the EG are actually a bit wider than the EK. Um, so they've included these two black bushings here if you want to use the EK lower control arm. All right, so I'm going to adjust these on the bench before they go in the car. And then once they're in there, we will fine tune um, the heights. All right, so that's done. And just off camera, I have gone ahead and removed the inner wheel well guard liners on both sides. Um, I do plan on dropping this car to a less than sensible height. Um, and uh, just based on my experience, I know that if I was to do that, um, even if I want to drop the car just a little bit, I know it's going to start chewing on the guard liner. There are no electrical vitals around the area, so we should be okay. Um, so yeah, now we're actually gonna see the wheels in the car for the very first time. So I'm really excited, smash the subscribe button. I'm gonna get the coilovers in there now and then we're gonna fit up the wheels.
All right, moment of truth. Will it fit? I know it's gonna fit. Hey. Looking good. Wow, look at the brake clearance, it's nice. It's plenty of brake clearance actually. Oh, it's very close to the front of the rim, but that is nice. Oh, yeah, this is nice. I think the roto is rubbing on the heat shield, so I'm just gonna have to bend that back. But, ooh. Good fit, man. Good caliper clearance. It's a bit close there, but still plenty of clearance. Nice, very nice. Now this is full droop, so um, what I'm gonna do is jack it up and I'm gonna see if we're gonna be able to clear everything because that looks like it might be too low. So just remembering on the EK models, you got two additional washers to add between the forks. So bolt, shock, spacer, through the little control arm, spacer, shock here on the other side of the fork, and the nut at the end. All right, and here we go again, the rears. Okay. Ooh, that's fat. Don't forget your Honda staples, jetting yard wheel nuts. Yes, very, very nice. Perfect for the stock body. Untouched body, untouched guards. I would say that's legal. It all fits between the guards, haven't rolled them, and I think this is a perfect setup. A really good alternative to the RPF ones, um, which would sit out quite a bit more. All right, so what I'm gonna do now is, you know what, I need to lower this. A bit more. Anyways, before I do that, I really need to tighten down all the suspension bushings, uh, the nuts and the bolts. And something I wanted to talk about is preloading your suspension before talking everything down to spec. The reason why this is so important is because you can end up destroying your bushings pretty quickly um, if you don't do this properly. If the car was on the ground, the suspension would be taking the full weight of the car um, and that would be its resting position. And you want to torque the nuts and bolts down to spec especially if it's a suspension component, especially if it's a rubber bushing. And how we're gonna preload is by jacking it up from the low control arm to mimic the car holding its own weight on that suspension, and then we'll tighten to spec. All right, so I'm gonna demonstrate this on just the front passenger corner. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I put a jack, I put a jack um, underneath the low control arm and I'm just gonna jack it up. I'm gonna jack it up to maximum compression and then I'm just gonna back it off. So I'll call this the resting position for the suspension and what I'm going to do is tighten all my bushings and all the nuts and bolts. To do this you're going to need a torque wrench and also your service manual for your torque specs. As a rule of thumb I like to do about 40 to 50 foot pounds of torque for anything uh, with a rubber bush like a ball joint. Um, that is just my general rule um, and anything which is just metal or metal I tend to just do like you know about four to five ugga duggers. Um, just nice and tight. Um, yeah, and that, that's what I tend to do. I know you should be following the torque specs on your service manual, so please make sure you do that. All right, so I'm gonna tighten the lower ball joint and I've set my torque wrench to 50 foot pounds of torque.
All right, that's done. And then the tie rod end. All right, so next one I'm gonna do is this upper ball joint. Now you can actually fit a torque wrench there because of the, the shape of the knuckle. So I'm just gonna to have to do this by hand. CV shaft on this one, so yeah, big ugly duggers on this one. Hold for 10 seconds. And the lower control arm to fork pushing. Fork to coil, metal to metal, so just... So the next step is just to put the cotter pins in. I'm just going to try to salvage my old ones. Um, but otherwise, that's it for the corner done. Alright, so all four corners sorted and the car is pretty much ready to settle on the ground. I really want to get the car on the ground tonight so that the suspension can settle for the next few nights before the wheel alignment. Um, and what's left to do now is to bleed the system. Well, not actually bleed. We need to fill the system with brake fluid because there's absolutely none in there. We've replaced the master cylinder, we've got brand new brake hoses and the calipers are empty. So I'm going to be filling the brake fluid up and bleeding the system um, and I've made it myself a little brake bleeder. So I'm going to throw you guys into a time lapse and get this done. Oh, you're kidding. Whee. Man, that is, that's low. I think that's a bit too low. Dirt nasty low. Ah, oh, looks good. It does look very good. Yeah, I think the fronts are too low. The rears are okay. Um, the rears are perfect. It's actually sitting on the guard, so. I do need to find um, someone to come and roll this guard. Yeah, anyways. <sighs> Gotta sort out the heights because I'm not driving it like this. <laughs> <coughs> Ooh, sexy. Oh yeah. I'm so glad I chose these wheels. The sizing is perfect. Otherwise I'd have a lot more issues. You know, I'm really happy with the rears. I'm gonna base my front heights off the rears because I love this look. Um, it's just sitting below the guard. And um, yeah, we we'll have to get someone to come out and lip this, this guard because that's definitely gonna to touch. Um, but apart from that, there's plenty of room. Once this is lipped, there's gonna be plenty of room. Wow, it looks great. I'm gonna call it a video, guys. This has been really fun. You know, I, I've really missed my Hondas and um, this has given me the opportunity to relive those p plater days without the same budget, with a bit more experience. And yeah, just, it was really fun. Really, really fun. Um, yeah, I've got a few things to do on the car before next week. Next Saturday is the track day, so there's a lot to do. I need to get the car registered. I need to get the wheel alignment done. I need to sort out the heights. So it just wouldn't make sense for me to continue this video um, because I really need to get it sorted. 
Um, but there's going to be plenty of content on the EK soon. We are due out at the track and I will bring you guys along with us uh, for the shakedown for the Civic. Hang on tight, guys. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you enjoyed it. Um, if you want, please feel free to subscribe. Um, it really does help me out. And once I get to 1K, we're going to get some new camera equipment. So please help me out. Um, anyways, good night. Take care.